Okay, what I wanted to go over is uh, some lighting information. So I wanted to go into uh, understanding uh, natural lighting, okay? Now, you can do all kinds of stylized lighting, which we do in animation all the time, but a lot of time you want to uh, initially uh, understand the basics of what lights actually really do in nature and we want to mimic that especially when we're doing environments and so wanted to go over some uh, basic uh, understandings okay <coughs> excuse me now lights inside of a 3d program have a lot of different um, variables a lot of different aspects but the ones that I would have you focus on are these okay so you can think of lights actually as two different entities that work together. One part of it does illumination and one part does shadows. And so there are two separate kinds of settings that you're doing in there. One sets is making the light uh, illuminate a specific way. And another, way, another part is how we want the shadows to react, okay? Now, uh, in dealing with your color, okay, one of the things that you want to really deal with in color is to pay attention to a natural color, and that has to deal with using Kelvin, okay? Kelvin is a temperature rating, so it's not really a color rating, it's a temperature. It, it's an actual how hot or cold something is. The higher uh, the number, the more blue the light will be, the lower the number, the more amber the light will be. Uh, 6600 is pretty much white okay and so when you're setting your lights if you stay within a Kelvin range then you know you are staying within a range of what normal lights can do just so you understand there's no such thing as colored lights I have people that say that all the time you know you want colored lights there's no such thing as colored light when you pull up when you're driving in your car and you pull up to the light and you see that red light there's no red light up there that's a white light with a red gel in front of it the green light is a white light with a green gel in front of it so in order to get colors in our lights we have to either put a gel or maybe tint the glass that they're in but light is not a color uh, a, a wide range of colors okay the range is based on the temperature of the light so if you stay within a Kelvin range then that will make your light seem more believable more realistic believable okay now uh, so there's little color pickers that you see all the time I see people going here and clicking these color pickers okay that is the death of natural lighting anytime you go in here and use a color picker and you're picking colors for your lights then you know you are doing stylized lighting and I'm not saying there aren't times to do stylized lighting okay but to me that's a special situation okay so I would tell you under normal situations where we're just trying to illuminate our models to make them look nice we want to use natural lighting so Kelvin is what we want to use okay now 3d lights by their very nature do not uh, fall off and what I mean is is if I put an Omni light out in my scene then they will shine all the way to Pluto okay they don't fall off like natural lights natural lights have a uh, distance and as they as they go away from the light source they start getting dimmer and dimmer that term is called inverse square and that's a mathematical formula inverse square now in max when you're using photometric lights photometric lights by default have all these attributes in them that's why I tell everybody only use photometric lights because they have these attributes built into them but that doesn't mean just by making a photometric light that you're set up to go because you may have to manipulate these okay <clears throat> now a, a photometric light by its very nature is inverse square you can't not make it inverse square square now, an omni light, if you put an omni light in your scene, which is not a photometric light, by default, it does not use inverse square, but you can go in and there's place within an omni light to turn on inverse square so it reacts that way. Okay. Now, inside of uh, Maya, they don't use the term inverse square, they use the term quadratic. Okay. So, quadratic is what uh, you want your setting in for your decay rate. Okay. By default, when you make an area light, and that's what I would say pretty much all your lights you want to ever use inside of Maya is an area light, you're going to come down here, and I think this says by default no decay, and you'll want to turn it to quadratic, okay? So now 
it's actually falling off. Now, this has got that color picker in here. So in a uh, Maya, you know, it's a little bit different in Max. Max has photometric lights, which means it's a special light that already has all these attributes built into it. Maya doesn't have those. So in Maya, what you do is you use an area light and then you modify it. We want to put to this quadratic. This color picker, you would go in here and click on this button right here, and then you would go get a Kelvin node that you would put in here so that that would control the color, okay? So the next thing we want to get into is uh, our shadows. We always want to use ray trace sh shadows, okay? Ray trace shadows will create area shadows. Now, what area shadows means is that uh, the shadow will be sharper edged up close to an object, and as it goes away from the object, it will become softer. That's not what normal shadows do, and if you leave the default, even on a photometric, the default is a shadow map. A shadow map is a bitmap. All it's doing is creating a bitmap and projecting a bitmap down. It's a cheat. There are times that we use those, but for the most part, you want to switch it to a ray trace shadows so that you have realistic shadows, which are referred to as area shadows. Okay, so let's take us through a specific, um, one of the uh, pieces one of the students have done in here. And of course, here again, I'm not picking on this student. I just chose somebody's at random, random to kind of uh, show. Okay, so here's one of the pieces that was put up. Okay, and uh, they're using photometric light. So, so they did actually uh, put up a photometric light. Okay, but can you see how nasty the shadows look? I mean, to me, this would have, should have been an alarm that went off to this person right off the bat that when they rendered this, they go, oh my gosh, this looks horrible. Okay, but they didn't. They go, oh my gosh, this looks good. I guess they think it looks good because they posted it. So um, here's a top-down render of it. Okay. You see the shadows, okay. Now, uh, and uh, I'm also going to talk a little bit about the shaders, and here's the shader that was put on it. So it's a clay shader, so it's an arch and design shader, yay, arch and design, and array shader, and uh, no uh, glossiness put to it, okay. All right, so here is the actual lighting setup for that piece, okay. So this light is generating this lighting, Okay, and you can tell because it's one light put over the top, which means all your shadows are radiating out one set of shadows, okay? Now, the main thing where the problem was is they, they did set it up. I mean, they turned their light on. They've got shadows on. They did Kelvin. They, they set this 100-watt light bulb. Now, they you know, it's a pretty big uh, reflector in here. It's an 8-foot by 6-foot reflector. That's pretty big. Uh, but the main problem is they left it at a shadow map, okay? And that's what's causing those horrible shadows is they left it at a shadow map. Now, if you know how to use shadow maps, which they don't, uh, I can make the sh I can make it look better, but I don't want to go into that because it's, that's not what we want you to do, okay? So I've come in here, and here's what my initial render looked like, okay? So it went from here to here drastic difference and here's my top down view okay so from there to there now the big difference on mine is I use four lights instead of one because what we're wanting is light to be bouncing around because in a room light doesn't just come straight down it actually bounces around the room okay so what we're trying to get the illusion here is multiple shadows as the light bounces around and we have multiple shadows, not just one shadow coming from thing. I mean, if we're sitting around the fireplace, maybe, okay. And, and at some point, if we want to light this as dark room, this is TV here and we want light coming out. I mean, we can do some mood lighting and stuff, but initially what we're wanting is the light to be dispersed a little bit. I changed from, um, eight foot by six foot to four foot by two foot. Why am I using four foot by two foot? Because that's what fluorescent lights are. By standard fluorescent lights are four foot by two foot. Now you may not have fluorescent lights in here, but it's gonna give me a softer lighting. Now, another thing that I did is I varied the 
color temperature of each one of these lights because when you have fluorescent lights, even if you're the, they're all the exact same, their colors shift over time. Next time you're in some kind of a building, really pay attention to the fluorescent lights and look around and you'll see that they're diff they're actually different colors. And so I varied these a little bit. But the main thing I did is I went down here and I turned this on to ray trace shadows. And that's what got me my saw shadows, the ray trace shadows. Okay. All right. Now, all I've done here is gone in and, and tweaked the shader a little bit. Okay. From here to there. And what I've done is added a little bit of a reflection and glossiness in here. I don't want too much, just a little bit, okay? But look at this area right in here, okay, as I turn this on and off. And can you see that slight reflection that's coming in there? Okay. You'll have a slight specular that's going on on the tops of these couches. Okay, so that's adding to our illusion of realism a little bit. Okay, now another thing I did is come in and did a thing called rounded corners. Okay, rounded corners is you go down into your special effects section and you turn on rounded corners and then you have to play with how much it is. You don't want too much. Okay, so um, that's the particular area that I'm dealing with here is on the rounded corners. But pay attention to this area right here as I turn this on and off and you'll see that we're starting to get a manufactured look to the edge of this, okay? So even if we didn't go in and actually subdivide this and get more of a manufactured edge, because these look like razor blades, they're your typical, you know, digital look, uh, in our shader, which is a huge advantage for mental ray users, is we can actually put this in there, and then it'll make it seem a little bit more like it was actually manufactured, okay? All right, the next thing I did uh, is I turned an AO on, okay? So look at the shadowing area right here in these little crevices. Now, I didn't render a separate AO, which we do that also, but what I did is actually in this section right here on your mental ray, section, mental ray shader, you can turn on uh, an ambient occlusion in the render itself, okay? And so you'll see these little shadows that are going into these areas are punching them in, looking, bringing a little bit more detail into there, okay? Then the last thing I did is in the render quality, you uh, guys are rendering at a default setting. I've come in and pulled up the quality a little bit, uh, each one of these up, and this is your final gather. This is bounces around the room. I pulled this up a little bit. Now, you don't have to pull them up a lot. I have people that pull all these all the way up, and it takes three hours to render. You don't go, don't go insane on me and pull it all the way to the top. You just need to increase it a little bit, okay? And then that will go from this to this, okay? Look at this section right here. See this little details right in there? Watch how they're really kind of grainy right there, and then now they're nice and smooth, okay? And so let's look at this uh, final top down here from the original. Um, there's his original. There's my final render. Quite a bit of difference. And then here's the, the uh, through the camera, the original my final piece. Quite a bit of difference in just how you set the lights up. So please take a little bit of time. Yes, it's a gray shader. We're not doing textures in here, but this gives you a great foundation of lighting before we even do the surfacing so that you have a nice presentation of your piece. Okay, thank you very much.